This is CBS 5 Eyewitness News. Tonight, we know that seafood contains amounts of mercury, but just how much is there, really? A new device can actually test a piece of fish in less than a minute for pennies a serving. On our Consumer Watch tonight, Sue Kwan puts sushi from the Bay Area to the test. Sue? Bright, buttery, decadent fish. It's hard to dispute fish is good for you. Simon Elsner eats it three times a week. Most often it's sushi from restaurants and on the go. Safeway and Whole Foods and so many health food markets have great sushi. It's really light and healthy. But there is a downside. There is too much mercury in a third of the fish tested by one chemical engineer. We've tested probably 75,000 fish and since 2004. We've certainly found more mercury in fish than we thought would be there. Mal Wittenberg with Safe Harbor Seafood Certification invented this mercury detection machine which challenges the safety standards set by the FDA. The federal government allows seafood to contain one part per million of mercury. That's twice the levels allowed in Canada and Europe. Japan's is even lower. Safe Harbor also sets the limits much lower by taking the industry average for each species of fish and if the mercury concentration in a sample goes over, it fails. We put Bay Area sushi to the test, taking samples from grocery stores and boutique markets to restaurant chains and high-end sushi houses. Technician Bob Bragg drills out a piece the size of a grain of rice and measures for mercury concentration. First, from Safeway's Deli, sushi made with yellowfin or ahi tuna. And the mercury concentration is 0.953. The standard for ahi is 0.4 parts per million, so it's twice the limit set by Safe Harbor. Would you eat it? No. In this batch of 26 sushi samples, salmon from Bristol Farms, a boutique market in downtown San Francisco, and hamachi, or yellowtail, from Japantown's Nijia Market, both failed the safe harbor test. Yellowtail from Benihana Chain Restaurant and more pricey sushi bar Ozumo both hit above the 0.4 parts per million limit set by safe harbor and failed. All of the sushi from this higher end neighborhood spot called Blowfish passed the safe harbor test and so did the samples from a low price chain called Weeby Sushi. That highlights the variability of mercury in seafood. You just don't know unless you test it. You can't look at it, you can't predict it. Currently, the FDA conducts blanket tests on random batches of fish with the costly results arriving in a week, well after the fish is sold. The Safe Harbor machines cut testing time down to 45 seconds and pennies. But the National Fisheries Institute, which represents the seafood industry, does not support the technology, saying federal guidelines are enough. Quote, the FDA's action level of one part per million is ten times lower than the lowest levels associated with adverse effects. That 1.0 is not enough. Dr. Jane Hightower, a renowned expert in mercury poisoning, says the federal action level does not take into account mercury can collect in the body sometimes up to two months. She has seen the effects on patients who consumed high amounts of fish known to contain more of the toxin. The patients had nonspecific symptoms such as headache, fatigue, troubles thinking, insomnia, muscle and joint pain, stomach upset, hair loss. Simon is aware of the risks but won't stop eating fish. He would like labels listing mercury amounts so he can get the positive health benefits of fish without the high doses of mercury. I mean, that would be yeah. awesome. Now, while no sushi exceeded the federal legal mercury limits, that was not the case for fish fillets. We found mercury levels so high, the FDA could yank the fish off the market. And we will have that story tomorrow. Now, for more on our sushi test, go to the Consumer Watch page. That's on CBS5.com. You can also find responses from the businesses that were featured in this story. Ken? All right. Sue Kwan, thank you for that.